Hey everyone, Scott here from Norebo.com, and today I'm going to give you a quick demo of how I created this Avianca A330-200 illustration. Now, this is going to be really quick. It's just going to be a time-lapse overview of how I did the entire illustration, uh, not the aircraft itself. Uh, I'll explain that in a moment, but uh, I just want to reiterate, this is a time-lapse. It's going to be quick. Uh, you may not be able to see all the details, but I'm going to talk through it as best I can. And if there's anything that you missed or that seems really confusing, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, I want ideas for future videos to make on demos and tutorials for specific things about this livery creation process. So anyway, since this is just a quick overview, let's just get into it. And first thing I need to do is I need to tell you that the templates that I'm going to be using comes from my website, norebo.com, a link in the description below. I've got over 130 different aircraft templates that I've created over the years. Uh, there's actually all white versions, there's line drawing versions, 130 so far. So it's an extensive collection. And just so you know, on my website, norebo.com, uh, these are free for the taking, the 1024 by 768 versions, JPEGs. Uh, feel free to download them, do whatever you want with them. But if you need the PSD files, the vector files, you can go over to my online store, which is shopnorebo.com, and I've got the same catalog of aircraft templates in PSD vector in PNG format, high resolution, 5,000 by 3,000 pixels. Uh, yeah, so this is, if you're really serious and you really want the most flexibility, I recommend going here. Anyway, let's just jump back over to Photoshop and get started. Okay, here we go. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go over to airliners.net and find a few photos. Uh, I found this one, which is pretty good. Or actually, I found two which uh, would be absolutely perfect for what I'm trying to do. It's it's not that hard to find good photos on airliners.net. That's my source. That's where I go to. Um, I'm going to put a link to these exact photos down in the description below. And uh, yeah. Anyway, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm in Adobe Illustrator now. And what I'm doing is I'm just roughly drawing the shape of that top red section there. And as you can see, I'm not tracing anything. I'm doing this all by eye. Uh, it's all, yeah, it's just, it's, I find I bet I work faster by, by just eyeballing things. And what I'm doing is going back and forth between Photoshop and Illustrator. I'm in Photoshop right now. You can see I just pasted that shape that I drew into Photoshop. And uh, but the bulk of this work is going to be done in Photoshop. Uh, I use Illustrator to, to draw the shapes. I jump back over to Illustrator now. And... Um, I just find it's easier to, to draw the shapes within Illustrator, copy and paste them over back to Photoshop and, and go that way. So now that I've got the shape roughly drawn out in Illustrator and it's pasted into Photoshop, I'm kind of starting to block everything out. I've, I've trimmed away all the excess. I've added the color into the vertical stabilizer. And now what I'm trying to do is I want to I want to add the logo in because that's a major element of this piece. And what I did is I just went to Google Images and I found this Avianca logo. It's a PNG file, and I couldn't find the vector. And I thought, well, you know, it would be faster, quicker if I could just do it myself. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. So what I did is I I imported the PNG into Illustrator, and now I'm using that as a background. I knocked back the opacity a little bit. I made it uh, so it's a little bit more transparent and it's not in the way as I go around each letter and trace it. I'm just using the pen tool here. I'm not using any guides other than just holding shift down and control to constrain it to straight lines for the, the perfectly vertical shapes and the, the horizontal shapes. But otherwise, just, just I'm all eyeballing it. You know, this doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, a trick here is with the C, it's, it's completely... Um, uh, 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 symmetrical <laughs> on both sides, the top and bottom. So what I did is I just created the top portion and then copied it over to the bottom and then just pasted it all together. Anyway, so tracing the Avianca letters was fairly straightforward, but now it gets a little bit more tricky as I go into the actual logo itself. Again, I'm just using the pen tool here. I'm just eyeballing it using my uh, my 
anchor points and my handles to kind of find the shape. And again, you know, not worrying about being totally perfect. Close enough is good enough, especially for the, the kind of work that I do. You know, it's not, I'm not creating actual logos of anything that are going to be in print and going to be used in, in brand elements for the airline itself. So I got a little bit of leeway here. So now what I'm doing is I'm just using the eyedropper tool to grab the color from the PNG file to the vector shapes that I created, which is a, a quick way of grabbing the color from existing graphics. Uh, you don't have to be real exact again, but I'm just getting it as close as I can, doing the gradients, trying to copy it and mimic it as much as I can. Uh, you know, no one's ever really gonna notice the difference if I'm just a little bit off. Uh, you know, good enough, it's close enough, I'm, I'm happy with it. So once I get it to where I want to be, I kind of put it back in place, and there you go. I've got my Vector Avianca logo, and I'm back in Photoshop now, and I'm going to start pasting it in. So I'm going to paste in both elements separately, because I need to do uh, some work here. So Avianca text and the logo separately. Keep them as vector shapes in Photoshop. Get them in place here, do a little bit of scaling to match the photo. You kind of got to wiggle it around a little bit just to, to get it right. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to punch a hole in that red. So I selected that red text, and I selected the, the text of the, the vector shape, and I just punched a hole directly in the red so I could see the shadows and the shading of the fuselage underneath. Now I'm into the logo on the tail and the vertical stabilizer, and this is... Uh, this is where you start to see where the airlines get a little bit sneaky in the way that they do things because first of all the logo is reversed compared to the way that I drew it and then also you can see it's actually smooshed down vertically and then they actually rotated it slightly on the tail and this is stuff that I didn't even notice until I was actually in here drawing but uh, it's kind of neat. You just you learn some neat things as you, as you go through this and, and trace things and drop things into place and you compare it with photos. So that's that's kind of cool. Anyway, what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to to match all the gradients and just uh, yeah just trim away pieces and add some extra gradients that weren't part of the original vector logo in the first place. And again, I'm I'm only using the vector as a guide here. I'm not using the actual vector logo itself because it's somewhat different than the vertical stabilizer logo that Avianca designed here. So I'm just using the vector logo as a guide and I just I, I trace it again in Photoshop essentially and I just I'm just trying trying to mimic the colors that I see in the photo. Again, it's all it's all smoke and mirrors. I mean, it's not exact, but it's it's close enough, and you can you can see that you know you don't need to be totally perfect. All right, so we're getting there. Uh, now it's just time to add in all the little details. So you do a little bit of modification to this logo here. It's a little bit the colors are a little bit different compared to the vector logo that I drew. Um, the version that's on the airplane is a little bit different, so you just got to go through and, and, and match everything up. So, and I just want to say also, as I go through here and just tweak the the PSD file and add all the little details in to all my layers, I just want to say that I know that I'm going through this really fast. Uh, if I would have done this in real time, this video would have been almost two hours long, and I know no one's going to want to sit through all of that. So, my all I really want to say is that if there's something that you see here that looks really confusing and you want to see me do a deeper dive into, I can certainly make another video for just that portion and, and show you how I do things. But um, for just for the sake of showing you how I create a livery illustration, I just want to condense this down into 10 minutes really quick. I just speed through it really fast, just as an overview of, of how I do things and how easy it is to use my existing uh, PSD airliner templates. So finding all the, the text for the registration numbers here and again it's just trial and error i'm just going you know, i'm in photoshop i'm just running through all the fonts that i have installed on my system and i went with euro style here it was close enough it's not exact but it's good enough i had to add a little outline stroke to it to make it a little bit thicker and you can see that it's it matches pretty closely it's not perfect but it's good enough for the sake of this demonstration and now i just want to clean up this engine and all the shading a little bit make it a little bit softer add a little extra little detail in there 
stuff that wasn't in the original drawing, uh, which I will update my PSD file, so all my latest versions will have these details that I'm adding now. So, yep, just going through. I, you know, I could spend days on these illustrations trying to get everything right, but at some point you just got to say, you know, enough is enough, it's good enough, and it's perfect. So what I'm trying to do now is just I'm trying to equalize the shading on both the top and the bottom as the uh, the cylinder shape goes around uh, and it matches better the, the the fuselage shading. So yeah, so now I'm grabbing some elements from some previous illustrations that I've done. I grabbed a Star Alliance logo there and put it in place. And see what else I need to do. Oh, the Colombian flag, of course, got to do that. And what I'm going to do here, I just went to Google Images, found a Colombian flag picture, and I'm just creating that in vector form here in Photoshop now. So I can, it's a scalable element, and I can always change the shape of it later, which is good. Got that in place. Okay, looking good, looking good. Um, let's see what else. Oh, we got to add the text here for the uh, front landing gear, that door cover. Get the registration number in there. That's perfect. And I think we are just about done. Uh, adding a few other little cleanup elements here. Uh, oh, I want to add a little bit of extra shading and bling to this. So I went back to Illustrator and created a hard, glossy edge just to use as a guide. And I bring that over to Photoshop, and I use that as an underlay. I select it and then just add a gradient over top of it just to give it a little bit of uh, a glossy kind of look. And then I do the opposite side for the, the white gloss, and then now I'm in the vertical stabilizer adding some gloss as well. So, yeah, I think we're pretty much done there. Um, you know, I think that's good enough let's just call it complete and do another version there without the landing gear get it all in place and yeah there you go you can see how easy that is and again I know that was really fast and really hard to follow but I just wanted to make this video as a complete overview of, of what I'm doing and how I do it just to show you the general process I may make more videos like this just to kind of show you what I'm doing, just to keep you up to date with what I'm doing. But again, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, if there's anything that I've done in this illustration that looks really confusing, please ask. I can very easily make a video showing exactly how I do certain things, and I think that would be actually kind of interesting. So at this point, I don't know what those things are. You need to tell me, and I will make those videos after. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a big thumbs up, and I'll catch you in the next one.